All right, if you've seen the other video I made on how to use the Drifter Customizer, a lot of the features on the add-on have changed now, like the way you customize the model. And you can also use the add-on to customize the cosmetics as well. So I'm just gonna show you how to use each new feature on the add-on. If you wanna see how to fully set up a render, you can go look at the other video. Just skip to around five minutes in, because the first five minutes is explaining how to use the add-on. But like I just said, that is outdated. All right, so first of all, you're gonna wanna go over to the plugin channel in my Discord. If you happen to not be in the server yet, the link to join will be in the description. But once you're in, just head over to to the plugin channel under Orion Drift Assets. This message might look a little different, but it should be pretty similar. Just look for the spot that says download and click on this link. If you're on Windows like me, just choose where you want to save it in the file explorer. For now, I'm just going to save it to my desktop. But I know if you're on Mac OS, sometimes when you download a folder that's zipped up, Safari might auto extract it. You want to make sure that that is disabled. I'm not sure how to do that on Mac. So if your folder is automatically unzipping itself, look up a tutorial on how to disable that because you need to make sure this stays zipped. But once you have the Drift your customizer folder downloaded go ahead and open up blender now when you get in blender your blender might look a little different from mine that's fine you should see this screen just click on general right here to start a new project if you want you can click a and then click delete to delete everything in the scene and you won't have this window here just ignore that it's how my blender set up next you want to go to edit preferences and then into the add-ons right here now if you have an old version installed it is very important that you do this click this arrow click on uninstall click ok then fully close out your blender if you don't fully close blender the plugin's not going to reinstall correctly. So once you close it, just reopen it, go to edit preferences, go back to add-ons again, click the arrow in the top right, and then do install from this. Now you want to go to wherever you save the drifter customizer folder. For me, I saved it to my desktop and then just select it and click install from this. And there you go. You should get this box that pops up. If this box is unchecked, make sure you check it. And then you can close out this window. Now in your 3d viewport, you can either click this little arrow right here, or you can click the N key on your keyboard to open up the sidebar, click on drifter customizer. And then you should see the plugin right here now. All right. So you'll notice that the UI or all the controls are not here. Go ahead and click add rig to project to add the rig into your current project. Also, if your blender looks something like this, when you add the rig, that means you are on solid mode. Make sure you are on the third one right here. This is material preview, which allows you to see the actual materials of the objects in the scene. And to customize your rig now, you have to select the model. You can see that when I click on the model, all the controls appear here. The reason this was added is because there used to be a rig switch feature right here, where you had four different buttons to switch between four different models. But doing this allows you to customize as many as you want in one project so you don't have to do only four you could do 10 or even 20 if you want it doesn't matter there's no limit anymore so if you have any model in your project just select it and the ui that appears is to customize the model that you have selected all the features like color palettes or the texture controls they all still work the exact same so color palettes contains all the in-game color presets so you can just search up what you want and just click the button underneath the icon and it will apply it to the model for you or if you want to make your own custom colors you have the base controls here that you can just change them manually. This allows you to change the robot pattern, the heart ball pattern, and the optics on the model. It's pretty simple. Just click what you want to change. For example, the robot pattern, and it'll open up a folder with all the in-game patterns. If yours looks different and it looks something like this, just go up to the top right of the file explorer and click the four squares right here. Then you can see the previews of all the patterns. So just find the pattern you want. For example, if you want an emissive pattern, go into the emissive folder and just select one of the emissive patterns. And then it's just the exact same thing for the heart ball pattern and the optics. And again, the same goes for the badge if you don't want the badge you can also disable it or if you decide you want it back you can enable it again to change your number just slide the number controls right here changing tens will go up by 10 so 3 is 30 4 is 40 5 is 50 then ones obviously brings it up by 1 so 5 and 3 is 53 then you have your shoulder pad toggles which is if you're using custom cosmetics you can disable the shoulder pads and you can of course turn them back on now once you have everything like your pattern your optics and your color set up on top you have an add cosmetics and an add tech tree items what separates these is tech tree items is everything in the mainframe and cosmetics is everything you see in spark supplies so for example if you want a certain set click on add cosmetics again if you see something like this click the four squares up here in the top right and it will display a preview of every cosmetic so if you want say the blood bite set go ahead and select the cape hold shift and select all the way to the right to select the entire set and then just click append now a new feature that makes the customization of cosmetics a lot easier unlike the old ones where you had to select each cosmetic go to the material tab and manually customize it you can now just select all five cosmetics or however many you have and you can see here that the plugin ui changed that's because when you select a cosmetic it changes to the cosmetic customization so you can open color palettes and actually use these on the cosmetics or if you want you can select one cosmetic and just change that one now also like i showed you in the last video instead of manually parenting each cosmetic to a single bone one by one at a time go ahead and select all your cosmetics hold shift and select 
select the rig. Don't select the model. Make sure you're selecting the bones, which is all these outlines. Once you do that on the plugin, you will see a rig parenting panel appear. Just click the parent cosmetics to rig button. And now when you go in pose mode, all the cosmetics are paired to the right bone. That is basically every feature that has changed to something new. But I also want to go over some stuff that is new to the plugin. First of all, you can now animate the colors directly on the UI. If you've tried making any animation with the old plugin, you probably noticed that if you hover over the colors and click I, that it does set a keyframe. But if you were to move and change the color to something else and set another keyframe, it wouldn't actually work. But you are able to add keyframes directly on the UI now. Move to, for example, frame 20, and you can even use the color palettes to change it still. So for example, I want it to fade to tiger. I change it to tiger, hover over the colors again and click I on each one. And you can see in the viewport that it actually changes when you play now. So basically the colors are just now keyframeable directly on the UI. But that wraps up all the new features added to the Drifter Customizer. Again, if you want to learn how to set up an entire render, go check out the other video and just skip to around five minutes in.